In our busy world, family time frequently gets neglected. It is vital that we give attention to our families while we can, and it is especially important to give attention to what God says in His Word about our homes. For the next few minutes, let's join Scott Pauley as we open the Scriptures and find God's message for your family. Over the last several episodes, we have spent considerable time in the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Now, we understand that Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, what is commonly referred to as the Pentateuch, uh, was written under inspiration by Moses, the man of God, for the nation of Israel. And so when you look at the first five books of the Bible, there is a, a beautiful cohesiveness to it. All the parts make the whole. I want to draw your attention today to the end of the Pentateuch. So come with me like bookends. We started with Genesis. Let's go to the other end of Moses' writings now. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. We're dealing with great Bible principles that will help every family. And we find one of them in Deuteronomy chapter number 6 today because Deuteronomy 6 is the passage that tells us that the key ingredient in every home is the Word of God. So many people believe that if they take all of the wrong things out of their home, they'll have a Christian home. But really, a Christian home is less about what you take out of it and more about what you put into it. In fact, if you put the right things in, Christ will crowd out all the things that shouldn't be there. It's the principle of replacement. It is the the principle of sanctification at work in our family life. If you put God and his word in their rightful place, then what you're going to find is the Lord is going to drive out all the lesser things. So that's why the emphasis of Scripture uh, is on putting the word of God into our homes. Look with me at Deuteronomy 6 today. The Bible says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. And notice the divine order here. Uh, he teaches, we do. It is, it's awful that we learn so many things we don't do. In the words of James, uh, many centuries later, we become hearers of the word without being doers of the word. And then he says in verse 2, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee. And then listen carefully to the second part of Deuteronomy 6, verse 2. Thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Do you, do you hear the spiritual chain reaction here? You see, there are things that you cannot give to your children. Uh, you, you can leave them material things, but those things, of course, are not eternal. Uh, you can't pass on your experiences. You can tell them, but they didn't live them. Uh, you can't make them feel the way you feel. You can't always make them think the way you think or the way you want them to think. But here is one thing you can pass on to every generation. It is truth. And the reason you can pass it on to every generation is because we're told in the Psalms that truth endures to all generations. So it's the one thing you can hand to your children and to your children's children and know it is not going to change. I was thinking just this morning how much our culture has changed just in my lifetime, and it continues to change. Uh, The mores of society continue to shift And there seems to be no fixed point of reference. Even what is considered to be legal now has drastically, radically changed in the last few years. But dear friend, though what is considered legal or moral may change, what is biblical never changes. God's word is forever settled in heaven, and that means it never changes on earth. So if we want to help our children navigate the culture we're living in, if we want to help the next generation be ready for everything that's going to come at them, we must get them into the Word of God, and we must put the Word of God into them. And notice the emphasis here on three generations. He says, thou, thy son, thy son's son. So uh, let's think of it in the terms of the nation of Israel for a moment. You have Abraham, and then you have Isaac, and then you have Jacob. Do you remember our recent study on uh, Abraham and his family? Hebrews 11 tells us that Abraham didn't just live in tents, journeying by faith by himself. 
Uh, he and Sarah? No, it was with Isaac and Jacob. What was God doing? God was allowing Abraham to instill certain principles into the life of his son and his grandson uh, by example, by living it out, uh, by demonstrating it so that when he was gone, the truth remained. You see, someday all of us are going to pass off the scene, but the one thing that can stay in the hearts and minds of the next generation and guide them and guard them is God's truth. And then go beyond that. You have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's start the process over. You have Jacob, then you have Joseph, and then you have Joseph's sons Manasseh and Ephraim. Do you see how early on in the nation of Israel, this is the way the principle was was applied. It was carried out this way. It's God's pattern. It's God's way. Three generations. So start thinking yourself, not just about your own generation, When I was a very young man, I had a a message that I preached from time to time to young people, and the title of the message was, This is My Generation. I was a teenage preacher at the time, and it was my generation. A generation typically is 35 or 40 years, at least that's the way people think. And I was preaching to my generation. Now at this juncture in my life, with children of my own, and uh, children who are getting ready to, to get married, and then will have children of their own, I'm starting to think differently. It's not just about my generation. It's about the next generation. Oh, no, it's not even just about that generation. It's about the generation that follows them, my children and my grandchildren. And so I want to challenge you to begin thinking, thou, thy son, and thy son's son. Number one, you've got to be right with God. You have to have the word of God in your own life. We'll talk more about that very shortly. And then you've got to get it into the hearts and minds of your children, your sons and your daughters. Let's start there with our first assignment. That's everybody's first ministry. And then don't stop there. Go beyond to the next generation. We're living in a world where many, many grandparents are raising their grandchildren, and there there are many reasons for that. But I want to say to you, whether you're raising your grandchildren or not, you do have the opportunity to influence them and uh, to provide a a beautiful example of a life well-lived following God's pattern, God's way. I love my children being around their grandparents. I love them observing the joy of the Lord in their grandparents' lives at this season. I love them seeing how that people who have been faithful to God and to their marriage and to the local church, how it has impacted them now for decades. And so the beautiful picture here is thy son, Thou, thy son, and thy son's son. Friend, the great need of our nation right now is not just for us to do a little better. The great need of our nation is for us to give God's truth, God's word to the next generation. And we're going to come back to Deuteronomy 6. In fact, I'd like to challenge you to read it before we study again. Read it for yourself because we're going to talk through some tremendous principles here on how to do this. Before we go any further, I want us to pause today. Right in the middle of this, I want us just to pause and pray. Would you join me right now in a prayer for the next generation and the generations to follow? Our Father, I pray for our children today. I pray for our grandchildren. I pray for the generations to come that they will come to know the Lord, His goodness, His his power, His love, His wisdom, His holiness. And, oh, Lord, I pray they will begin to know him better in us. Lord, may we live the Christian life today, and may we teach them God's word. Lord, may your truth be alive in us, in our sons, and in our sons, son. And we thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope that you will spend some time talking with your family today about these truths from God's Word and spend time praying for each member of your family. You may find additional podcasts, helpful articles, full-length Bible messages, and other resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Until next time, may God bless you and your family.